Anthrax is, a, is one of these biological weapons that you often hear about in, in the newspapers or other media outlets. It's this spore-forming bacteria that really you inhale through your nose or your mouth uh, into the upper lungs. And what it does is that once it gains a foothold, it incubates in there and it releases these deadly toxins that ultimately will cause the individual to die. Researching anthrax is it's kind of a risky business, actually. I mean, this is a pathogen. It's developed to kill human beings as well. And so the very vaccine that you use to treat humans with anthrax is developed from the actual pathogen itself, the bacteria itself. And this is a process that involves these kind of like uh, small Thompson bottles, no, no bigger than the shape of my hand here. They hold about half a litre of material. And really, when this process started in the 1950s, it was a, it was a cottage industry. You only needed say maybe 10 or 15 bottles a year in order to actually produce enough vaccine. You now need 250 bottles almost once a week in order to produce the actual demand for anthrax vaccine. Anthrax is the classic vaccine of a very uh, important disease which a vaccine was generated decades and decades ago uh, and now has to be brought up to speed to allow it fit for purpose for, for the current use. The recent pandemics have shone a light on the vaccine industry and has been shown it's quite slow to respond. What we wanted to do is kind of create these scaled down models and miniaturised bioreactors in order to investigate methods and ideas that we could use to try and create more vaccine in less time and with less time in development make cheaper vaccines as well. The department's expertise in ultra scaled down miniaturization of manufacturing processes is um, a world-leading capability. Their work is unparalleled in terms of the speed and the quality of data that you can get out of small processes. We were able to half the production time and also increase the vaccine titers by around 20%. So that's a great output for the anthrax work. But what we really want to do is actually take those fundamental engineering principles and actually apply them to much broader ideas and, and broader uh, output. The other vaccines that we've looked at um, range from a Japanese cephalitis virus vaccine, HIV-1 pseudotype viruses for gene therapy against Parkinson's disease. We've also had a look at flu, and we're hoping to have new projects looking into conjugate vaccines against pneumococcal disease. As someone who works in the biotechnology industry developing vaccines, the work of Tarot is really important to me because he allows me to develop and understand the processes to produce my vaccines much quicker, much more efficiently, and to have data around that manufacturing process which is essential to allow that vaccine to be made properly at manufacturing scale. It's had a significant impact because we don't just operate in a vacuum, we liaise very closely with a lot of the big pharmaceutical companies. There are a number of institutions um, not just in the UK but all around the world looking into quickening or shortening the development process. But in terms of this scaled down methodology, it's really the Department of Biochemical Engineering at UCL which has been pioneering the process. This research is incredibly important to the outside world. Everyone has healthcare, everyone needs vaccines, but broader principles, people also need new energy sources like biofuels, they also need new products in terms of food security. All of these outputs come from the work we do as biochemical engineers.